As we host the 10th special session of the African Ministerial Conference on Environment that's in Abidjan, the African Urban Forums Addis Ababa, and the World Urban Forum in Cairo, all happening at the last, in the last part of this year, we are encouraged to focus our energy and priority on building resilience through key programs, notably financing locally-led climate actions and building climate resilience of the urban poor. This will have great potential for both the rural and urban communities. Currently, cities account for about 75% of the world's energy consumption and are responsible for over 70% of the global greenhouse emissions. The way cities are planned, built, and managed is key to reducing carbon emissions and keeping global warming within the limits of 1.5 degrees Celsius as set by the Paris Agreement of 2015 on climate change. Efforts of city authorities must translate into better and sustainable urban environments that result in improved air quality, sustainable use of ecosystems, cleaner energy, reduction of overall energy consumption, and greenhouse gas emission, and improved waste management. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, to address the devastating impacts of climate change, we can't continue with the business as usual approach. It is important that we change the game. I strongly believe that Afghan is the game changer. Afghan therefore has a critical role in supporting the African Union Commission in its commitment to climate action. Afghan is expected to be fully committed to enhancing mobilization of climate finance and enhance its access to all the 55 African countries. This will help Africa to deal with this issue seriously. Because this is an issue that Africa must confront head on if Africa hopes to, 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 to develop. Africa is the richest continent on the planet Earth in as far as raw, raw materials are concerned. Yet it's a paradox that the richest is also the poorest in as far as the living conditions of these people are concerned. This is a paradox that we can actually reverse as a people. Yes, we can, the historical reasons to justify what is here there today. But we cannot live in history forever. Other countries were also colonized, for example. But they have marched on. So it's time that Africa took its position in its own hands and worked as one unit. If we are going to negotiate for compensation, which is our right, because Africa, for example, has got also one of the biggest carbon sinks in the world, the second largest of the Amazon, the Congo forest. So Africa needs to be compensated. But if we go as Kenya, we go as DRC, Nigeria, Guinea, Senegal, Egypt, Algeria, South Africa, then we're not listening to you. They keep on taking you round and round and round. I've told you because I've told you I've been to these international conferences, these COP conferences. The resolutions are being passed. You can talk until your voice is hoarse. But after that, people pack up and go. Heads of state jump or come in on jets, land and quick there to go and make speeches, making speeches back on the jet and go back. They wait for the next other conference next year. So the people who are just going, doing those conferences, 
They move from one conference to another conference. Each year, each year they take two months or three months camping in those conferences. But nothing concrete comes out of them. You must make sure that something concrete comes out of those conferences. The African Union can be the champion of, of this. African Union should be able to speak more effectively on behalf of the interests of Africa if the African government give it the, the power and the mandate to do so. And that's the reason why I've offered, offered myself to run for the position of African Union chairmanship. I hope that I will be able to use that position effectively to represent Africa, to make sure that Africa claims this century. I finish by telling you the story I tell of an African lion. African lion, there are several African lions. In the soccer, those of you who know soccer, the, the, Brazil, the, the Cameroonians are called the indomitable lions. The ones of Senegal are called the lions of Teranga. The ones of Morocco are called the Atlas lions. So a lion is a very important animal in Africa. See, the king of the jungle. Now the African lion is challenging the Asian tiger. Tell the Asian tiger that you, an Asian tiger, you've danced on the world stage alone now for too many decades. The European bear retreated to the poles, North Pole, long time ago. The American panda is also on the retreat. You have been there alone all this time. I myself have been here asleep in the, the, the Congo, the, the jungles of the Congo. But now I'm awake. I have the giant Congo forest, the mighty river Congo, the mighty Nile, the Niger, the Zambezi, the Limpopo, surrounded by peaks, the Kilimanjaro and Kenya to the east, the Atlas Mountains to the west. And here, I'm sitting on African gold, African diamonds, African bauxite, African iron ore. And I'm going to turn all this and African oil. I'm going to turn all this wealth, these raw materials into wealth and claim the 20th century as truly an African century. End of, end of the message of African land. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for that captivating speech. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Let's take our seats, please. You know, the Prime Minister's challenges.